Hi, welcome to Ms. Chow's pre-lab. We are doing the pre-lab for the precise volume lab. Here are the list of materials first. You need to have your stock reagents, blue, yellow, and red stock reagents. You're also gonna need your group reagents. that are going to be blue, yellow, and red. You're going to need a test tube holder with six test tubes. These hold about 25 milliliters of liquid. Uh, you can use untempered, which means it doesn't have a lip, or tempered, that means it has a lip. That means you can hit these up, but we're not going to do that today. You're going to need parafilm, marker, tape for labeling, scissors, 25 mils of graduated cylinders, a 10 mil graduated cylinders. In your groups, it'll have corresponding group numbers on it. Sink safe waste, so it's telling that it's safe to go put down into the sink since we are using food coloring today with water. Um, we have a 250 mil beaker um, that will hold water for your one mil pipette <clears throat> for rinsing later on. This is a 400 mil liter beaker. You're going to need a wash bottle to help you wash out the test tubes. Over here, you're going to need a bottle brush for washing the larger beakers if needed, and a test tube cleaner. And ideally, you would have dishwashing liquid that's in there. So that's the materials you'll need. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take this back and we're going to go ahead and start the procedures. Take all these items back and we'll call them back in when we need to use them. So number one, the procedures. Somebody in your group needs to make sure that all the test tubes are clean. If there's stuff on the bottom, you're going to have to wash it out with the test tube and um, soap water um, near the sinks. So make sure all of these are clean. Um, if you can't rinse it out with the bottle brush, bottle wash here, you would spray it around. Notice that my tip is not actually touching any of the test tube. And then you're going to throw it into the waste. If it's still stuff on the bottom that you see little grits, then you would have to wash it. So let's assume all of this is clean. Step two, <coughs> you're going to take your permanent marker and uh, labeling tape. You guys will have rolls of tape. Each group will get a different color. This is my example. So <coughs> you're going to, step two is label these, put A, B, C, D, E, and F one for each of the test tube in order. So that would look like this. So step two is to label each one of them. Now granted some of these may already have stuff written on them. We're gonna ignore that and put a label over it. Okay. Step three, <clears throat> we are going to make sure that we have enough of the group stock. So step three, you need to have at least 30 milliliters. These are 50 milliliters beakers, as you can tell here. It's labeled red. You want to make sure it has 30 milliliters of stock red. And you need to make sure you have um, 25 milliliters of blue and 20 milliliters of yellow. You notice the blue is a little bit low. So what I'm going to have to do is take some from the stock, open it, and fill about, or approximating because we're not doing exact measurements since it's going to be stock. We're going to close the label up here. You're going to see that it can close tightly around here. Once that's done, now if it does end up breaking, you can just get another piece of parafilm. When you cut the parafilm, pull it out, cut it along here as a guiding line. This part, tear off and you would throw away. So, 
Over here, this is about 25. We're approximating. So that is step three. From here on out, you're only going to measure liquid by using the graduated cylinders of the 25 mil and the 10 mil. Step four, <clears throat> in test tube A, you are going to put 25 milliliters of red liquid. <coughs> I'm going to show you how it's done. So with 25 mils, we have two choices, 25 mils or 10 mils. So which one do we use? A or B? Since we're measuring 25 mils, this will be the easiest at A. So when I'm doing measurements, one thing I need to make sure is my graduated cylinder is on the table. The reason we're not measuring directly from the stock is because this is a huge container and it's harder to gauge how much liquid I'm pouring. So this is why we have smaller amounts of liquid. So this one, I'm going to measure out to 25 mils. I'm going to show you guys 25 and slowly pour until I get to 25 over here. And as we get to a top, we are dripping. Now, if you look here, the meniscus is the bottom round part there. It is slightly above the line, so it means I put a little bit too much. Since this would be kind of like our group stock, we can't directly pour it back in here because this might contaminate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out all the water that's in here and make sure that it's air and suck some of the liquid up down to the line. Is that the line? Okay. So I'm going to put this into the waste and to clean this, I'm going to put the pipette in there, suck in the water and push out into the waste about three or four times until there's no more red liquid. Since there's not a lot, <clears throat> I can put this back in. Now I have exactly 25 mils. So I'm going to put 25 mils into the A beaker. Next, I am going to measure out 17 mils of yellow liquid. So I'm going to do the same thing with 17 mils. Now with 17 mils, do oh, I just poured out the red thing from there. So that means there's some red liquid in there. Hmm. If you end up trying to put the red liquid in there, and there's still some in there and you can't get it out, you need to make a note of it that some of the liquid's still in there. Also, I'm going to use this later on, so that means I'm going to have to take the wash bottle and squeeze in the water. We're going to do this rotating it as I'm doing this. Do it slow so you aim inside three times so it's washed all the way out. <clears throat> so I'm ready to now to measure 17 mLs of yellow liquid. 17 mLs of yellow liquid is going to go into C here. So let's, for the sake of time, we're going to put 17 mLs of yellow, yellow liquid into here and 21 mLs of blue liquid into the E. So if I was to do that, You would have 25 mLs of liquid here, 17 mL liquid of yellow, and 21 mLs of blue. The next step is that what we're going to do is measure 4 mLs of C to pour into D. This would be step 7. So measuring this would be step 4, step 5, step 6. Step 7, you're going to take 4 mLs from C into D. When I put 4 mLs, 4 mLs, should I use the graduated cylinder of 25 mLs or the 10 mLs? A or B? If you chose B, that will probably be the most accurate because it is a smaller unit measure. Now when I do this and I measure out 4 mLs, <coughs> A little bit hard to see because it's the color yellow. So I'm going to see how far I went. 
Okay, I went way past it. So my four is down here, and it's almost at five. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the one mil pipette to help me to become more accurate. I gotta squeeze out all the water first. While still squeezing, I'm gonna put this in here and suck up the liquid. Did it reach there yet? I can't see. Okay, now that is about 4 mLs. Now, since this came from a pre-measured amount in here, I'm going to put it back in here because we have a set amount in here. The whole purpose of this lab is things. how accurate can you be with your measurements. Oh, there's still a little bit left, so I'm going to squeeze it all out, suck in some of that water, and put it into waste to clean out the pipette. Now you probably have to clean it out four or five times to make sure it gets out, especially with stronger colors such as red or blue. I'm going to put this back in. So this is four mLs. The main thing is whatever was left we didn't put it into waste. We put it in here because we want to have an accurate amount of how much we just got from there. So C into D, four mLs. Now this is step eight or step seven step eight you're going to take seven mls of tube e and put it into tube d okay so tube e into tube d and then you're going to swirl so then step nine you're going to take four mls from here and put it into the f tube step ten you're going to take seven mls from tube A and then you're going to put an F and then you're going to swirl. Then tube A, step 11 you're going to take eight mls from tube A and then put it into tube B. Then step 12 you're going to take three mls from tube C and pour it into tube B and then you're going to swirl. Then at the end if you would like, you can take a picture for documentation of what are the colors that you've made. The whole point is not about mixing colors. The whole point is see how much liquid was transferred, how accurate you are, and how, accurate, how much liquid you get at the end. So there should be a total, which I will show you the following day. So you need to mark down what colors you have for each of the tubes and how many ml. So after you take a picture, you're going to have to after you use this and you clean it, oh yes, don't forget, after I use this, let's just make sure all of it was gone and then make sure it was cleaned. So after this, you're going to take the 25 ml for each one of these, pour into here, make sure it's all gone into here, and then see how many ml you have. There should be a certain amount, and we'll check to see how accurate your group is. And you're going to write everything down into this table here, okay? Now, <coughs> once you're done, you're going to clean up. You're going to pour all the liquids, once you're done measuring, back into here, the waste. And then you're going to take all the labels off. All the labels go into the trash. The waste goes in here. Now. At the end, since this is sink safe, you should be able to just dump this into the sink and wash it out with soap on all your test tubes as well. And you're going to put the supplies back to exactly where you found it. If this is the center of your counter, all the stock should be there in the center. And these should be uh, in the setup. I will have a picture of what your setup should look like at the beginning of class.